Yo, today's podcast is brought to you by Good Chop, America's online butcher. With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for high quality American meat and seafood. Yo, let me tell you, it's lit because Good Chop offers convenient contact free delivery right to your doorstep, and they hook me up with some bomb ass meat. I'm talking about ribeye, scallops, and you get to customize your own boxes. Everything is right from the good old US of A, and for y'all, I got a special treat, okay? Go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. One more time, go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Uh, Good Chop, America's online. Line butcher. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantarangsu, and this is my co-host Rice Gum. <laughs> <With the food. laughs> oh man, yo! The funny thing is, funny story. I keep. When I when I mentioned him on the podcast because there was some drama going about him and people are like, hey, can you talk about this? I don't remember what the the topic is. Yeah. But I kept fucking up his name because I don't know the kid. Okay. Right. And so I was like, okay. In early on when I was doing uh, Genius Brain, I'm like, send me some stuff that you want me to talk about. I had to look up this kid and people thought I was making fun of him because mm-hmm. I thought his name was Rice Bum. Because oh. I thought he was like a comedian, so ah. I was like, oh, that's pretty funny. So throughout the whole podcast, I'm like, this kid Rice Bum. Like, <laughs> so they thought you were like roasting. No, and then I went back. I'm not roasting. I thought his name was Rice. Bum, yeah, my yeah, bad, yeah. dude. I, if you're just listening, I called David Rice Gum because he put on a Bape hoodie, and I've never seen him wear a Bape hoodie before. Listen, <laughs> I had to do a self tape audition where I'm playing this uh, rich, like obnoxious gamer kid. Rice Gum. <laughs> okay, oh, is that what he is? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> okay, I was playing. Uh, it's it's for a movie called Rice Gum. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to Rice Gum. Look, every time before you get into your story, every time I run into Rice Gum, he's all been super nice. You know what I'm saying? Um. I've never really like kicked it with him. We just run into each other in passing at parties, and he did a couple episodes of Wildin' Out. Um, yeah, I feel most of these online like younger celebrities, they're actually really nice in person. They they just don't know how to get out of character sometimes. I right? feel that they play that character so fucking hard they forget about real life. But when you see them in person, they're actually really cordial. Yeah, they're just playing this hardcore character, and it's almost like some of these kids. And I'm not saying it's him. Yeah, and I've talked to a lot of parents about this that these kids online personalities are way more intense than who they are in person. Right, right. And so I was actually selling a, a, some camera gear uh, on OfferUp, and I met this person, and she was asking me what I did for a living. And she goes, hey, do you do – you? she goes, that's interesting. She goes, I, most online personalities that I meet, you know, specifically her little uh, cousin is big on Twitch apparently. Okay. And she says that his content is him screaming, like saying all these opinions, mm-hmm. but anytime he's out in public, he's like – yeah. Hands class staring at the floor, not really talking. Yeah. And so she's trying to get him to be a little more outgoing. She goes, you know, your online personality is super funny. Mm-hmm. Just do that in real life. Just he, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Balance it out. A little you know? bit. But she's saying that he can't do it because it's so in his head because in his room, he could say whatever he wants and he doesn't have to have somebody say anything back to it's him. It's just him and his camera. Exactly. So I think a lot of these like younger kids are kind of like that. Not everybody, but the 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 major online personalities. No, I agree. And and before we, you know, and, and let's not forget about your original story. We're not going to ignore it because yeah. I want to go back to it. Um, I mean, even I feel like before the whole obnoxious gamer personality was something that people, like was a thing, you know? Mm. Uh, I feel like, you know, all of us, right? Even you and me, more so in the beginning than now, when I would turn on the camera and I'd be doing my little bit, rants. Yep. Yeah, you kind of, it's your personality, but you're on 10. Bam! Bam! All the way up, you know? That's why a lot of people would meet me in person and they'd be like, oh, you're calm. Mm. Or they'd be like, oh, why aren't you, why aren't you funny right now? <laughs> <laughs> Ew! <laughs> go, uh, I, I'm like, I'm, cause uh, you're not paying me? <laughs> cause I'm like, I'm actually just chilling. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm like, for what? <laughs> my, my comment is always, you're a lot nicer in person, uh, right? But I'm, but in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not gonna walk up to you and be like, hey, you know what? Today, yeah. you're a little bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a, you know, it's a character. So I get it. It makes sense. Oh, but I had a. Uh, So we've been doing, obviously, because of COVID, a lot of uh, tapings Mm -hmm. for auditions. Mm -hmm. And so my character, a lot of self-tapes. So so just to explain, a little little sidebar, if you guys don't know, normally when we go on auditions, you go, you get your sides or your little script, you go to a room of one or two people in front of a camera, you say your lines with that person, and that's that. 
for for COVID and like you know if you can't make it you do a self tape audition which is where you set up the camcorder yourself a little camera whatever you have someone reading with you ideally and then you they send you your mm-hmm. lines and you send in a little tape and then you send in a little slate which is hi I'm Tim Chantharangsu I'm five five and I'm from Los Angeles California. Exactly. <laughs> so that's basically the you know a general gist of the auditioning process, right? Well, because of COVID, everybody's doing self tapes rather than in persons. So, the thing that I got today, and this has been happening a lot, and I think like the actors union is starting to complain a little bit just because with these auditions, they're so fucking long now. Bruh. <laughs> like, dude, I got these sides the other day, just yesterday, and I have a whole day to memorize the stuff, and it was about you know six pages, which is not bad, but it's essentially a six-page fucking monologue. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sitting yes. here, how the fuck am I supposed to memorize all these lines? It's ridiculous, dog. I thought I was tripping, right? Yeah. Like, until I texted my actress homegirl, I'm like, am I tripping? Or are these auditions fucking long as shit lately? <laughs> they used to be, I feel like, a page. Maybe a page or two. To get a feel. Yes, but now it's like, like you said, bro, like fucking seven to ten pages, three different scenes. Like, you guys, am I am I back at Paramount High drama class? No, you want to... <laughs> Dude, I had to look back at the tape, right? I got so exhausted, I didn't even finish the whole... I was like, this is too long. I don't want to watch this shit. Because it was... Mine was like six, seven pages, not even... It was one scene. Yeah. Yeah. One scene. So I have no breaks in between. So mm-hmm. I was thinking, and I know this sounds a little weird, but if you guys have if you guys have never acted before, just think about trying to get in, into character, figure out the whole scenario of the scene, make sure that you hit these lines, and also make sure that you portray the character correctly. Mm-hmm. Because if I had to just read the line straight up with no personality, no thinking about scenarios, I could probably do it way faster. Right, right. But having to do that all together was so fucking hard. And literally today, I was like, I'm... This is how am I gonna fucking do this? Yeah, man. It's like the thing is, right? It's like okay, yes. If I had a, if I know I have a part in a movie or something like that, of course, yes, I'm gonna memorize everything. But the, a part of you is like, do I really want to spend like two days memorizing ten pages just to audition for this shit, <laughs> just so they can be like, nah? <laughs> and it's like it's so annoying because you know, um. I really, you know, I didn't know in the beginning when I was doing auditions that you should be off book for whatever they send you. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like I was just my first couple auditions when I would send in the self tapes. I'm kind of like reading this shit, you know, but my agent was like, hey, you should probably try and get off book. It, it would really help. I'm like, oh, all right. So now you got to memorize it. Right. And you know what I started doing, though, because, you know, and which is the benefit of the self tapes um, they don't know where the person reading with you is. Yeah. So Chia will be sitting over here on the couch or something like that. And what I started doing is I'll print out the lines, dog, in fucking big text mm. and put it right next to the camera. So it's like I'm looking off camera at a person, but I'm reading. And like that's good. Yeah, yeah. Almost like I'm doing SNL like cue cards. Yeah. But I do it enough time so it just kinda looks like I'm just talking to somebody. And you just need one word that'll help you yeah. remember the rest of the lines. Yeah. That's it's it's definitely a craft too. And if you do like <clears throat> self tapes, you actually can read off paper. You know, this is like if it's last minute, you can't do it. But right. then reading off paper is actually a skill. It's very, very hard to do it well. And act. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you have to just stay in character and then look down real quick and still somehow keep your your, your field of view correct. Mm-hmm. It's 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 actually pretty fucking difficult. And I didn't I didn't think that uh, self taping was going to be harder than in person, but it's mm-hmm. been a lot more difficult. You know why it's harder for me? I'll tell you why it's harder for me versus like here's the pros and cons of it for me specifically is that um I've always felt like I'm not a good auditioner to be honest like i feel yeah, like most people aren't yeah and so i think there's a lot of yeah same here bro like you know i feel like you the, all the time someone's been like i have a part for you here's do it like here here it is let's do it let's film it everyone comes up to me afterwards like yo you killed it great job you were hilarious or you killed the scene blah 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 but when i have to audition dog i've never actually booked a a, a an acting audition like i've gotten callbacks i've gotten like yo great you're on the short list for this um, but the only like real auditions I've booked are um voiceover shit, um, cartoon shit and wildin' out, which is I'm not acting, you yeah. feel me? But so I actually 
I like doing self tapes, but my issue is I'm so critical of myself. I'll do yes. fucking 30 takes, dog. I have to narrow down. I have to edit down like an hour of footage for like a little two minute scene. That's the weird thing. It's and sometimes when you do these self tapes, everything is good, but this one part. Oh, then, I know. <laughs> and then you go, fuck, I'm going to do it again. Oh. And then you correct that one part, but then you fucked up on another part. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll I'm be like, like, is there a way I can. Edit the beginning of this with the end of this seamlessly? <laughs> nah, I can't. It's it's so hard, man. Like I, the only thing, the funny thing is, probably one of the best auditions I've ever done was for that show, the 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 best leftovers ever, right? Mm. And that once again isn't scripted, mm-hmm. but <laughs> the whole story behind that was that my manager gave me a call saying, "Hey, I got you this uh this 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 meat." What I heard was a general meeting for this potential food show, mm-hmm. the best leftovers ever. I was like, cool. I just got done with Muay Thai, and I was in my <laughs> Muay Thai shorts yeah, yeah. and a shirt, and I showed up half sweaty, and I was there. And then I come into a room, and I see a room full of people. And uh-huh. these are a bunch of food and food people that I follow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> right? I'm sitting there like, yo, man, I'm, I see you on Bon Appetit. I've seen you on Food Network. Mm. I thought, this is really cool. I'm like, hey, are you ready for your, your, for your uh, chem test? I'm like- what? Why? I had no idea it was a chem test. And I showed up like I just got my ass beat at the gym. Oh, my God. And so I'm fucking here, like, you know, texting my manager. I'm like, hey, <laughs> is this a chem test? He goes, yeah, I told you it's a chem test. I'm like, fuck, I don't remember that at all. Mm. And the funny thing is, I only realized this. This whole realization moment came after. So I already did the chem test at that point. And we were just <laughs> talking, just having fun, doing things casually. But that's what they wanted. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah. So we were just we were just kind of riffing off each other, and then you know when I came back to the room and I kind of clicked it all together, mm-hmm. I was like, "Yo, this is these are all people here auditioning for a role." Mm-hmm. I had no idea, and then I got the role the next day. And they're like, they're like, they're going over it. They're like, "I tell you, the, that David Soul guy is great, but he stank." <laughs> He goes, you know what? He looks like he just doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. And if you guys don't know what a chem test is, sometimes they'll have people in mind, but it's like an ensemble. So they want to get the people together. It's a chemistry test. They want to make sure the people work well with each other, bounce off each other well, look good together. Um, and that is what a chem test is. Did you? Do you remember your very first audition ever? <sighs> very first audition. Yes. Yes, I do. Um... It was for a serious part, um, and I remember, I think I was supposed to play the son of, like, a Japanese war vet or some shit like that. What the hell? I don't know, dog. I just remember I was. it was supposed to be, like, a, a kind of a sad part, and I just... It was like my first ever audition. I was mad young. I was probably like 17. Oh, shit. You were super young. Yeah, I was like probably like 18. And I went in for this shit and I was still kind of like, I had never done a real audition before. So I was kind of awkward. And then I remember just being like reading the serious lines and not knowing how to do it. I remember Mm. just being like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. I guess that's what it's about, huh? And like yeah. just being real kind of like, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> and but and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that was it. And then I feel like they gave it to another Asian dude who just looked more like the dude just looked sad. Mm-hmm. And I didn't look sad. <laughs> Just asked him, how was your audition? My dad died. <laughs> he was in character yeah, from the beginning. My dad died. <laughs> but my uh this isn't my very first audition, but this is my first audition for an actual role, right? Mm-hmm. Other things that I've done were commercial work and, and all that other stuff. I have a funny story about that too, mm-hmm. but my first audition, this is how fucking stupid I am. <laughs> I, I'm i so used to doing comedic roles, right? Mm-hmm. Doing serious roles for me is what I actually prefer. Same. I actually enjoy them way much, way better, and I actually get more callbacks for them, mm. uh, even though I'm a comic. So, But <laughs> for some fucking reason, this is how stupid I am. I get this role. And I'm reading these lines, right? And it's supposed to be some uh, computer tech geek nerd okay. that works for you know the type the Pentagon or something like that. Okay. And oh uh, no, not the Pentagon. It was for um, that was a different audition. This is for uh, the NCIS. You know, blood splatter people. Yes, 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 yes. yes those yes, guys, yes. those scientist dudes. So, for some reason, I read this forensics. Role, forensics, yes, yes. For some reason, I read this role as a comedic role. Mm. And it wasn't a comedic role. And so when I go into the audition, I'm doing it all super jokey. And then the lady looks at me and she goes, that's a very interesting take. <laughs> but can we try it you know, more appropriate for the scene because this is actually a murder scene? Mm. And then it hit me. Aha. I start sweating. I go, <laughs> <laughs> talk. I say, I start 
my ass starts sweating. I'm like, you fucking idiot. It's a serious role. And I was make, I don't know how I somehow turned it into a comedy. Right. And so I tried to do the role. I fucked it up because I don't, I'm out of character now. Yeah, yeah. Dog, I go into the uh, my car, and it was a Tesla at the time, mm. and I just remember I rolled down the seat and I laid down and I went, Fuck! I started screaming, you fucking idiot! I laid in that car for like an hour. Oh, man. Because I was mortified. <laughs> One of the worst auditioning experiences of my life. And that I, person probably remembers me. I mean, that's why you got to make sure and uh, read the... Because it comes, sometimes they'll give you a little character. I didn't read any of that shit. <laughs> I just read the line straight up. Yeah, I always... Well, here's what I used to fuck up, right? Is... um. Sometimes I would just read my highlighted lines and I wouldn't read the in-between shit. And I feel like mm. sometimes you don't get the context. Like describing the scene? Describing the scene. And um, and I think I've done a couple auditions where I just read my shit and then I interpret it. And I'm like, wait, are you stupid? And I'll read the shit back. I'm like, oh, this is completely different than what I thought was going on because I just didn't look at the like little scene describing, oh, this is what he ha- this is what he does. This is what he's doing. This is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a... Literally, I got sent an audition this morning. Like you said, long as shit. Um, but uh, it it was a serious part, which I always appreciate when I get put on lists for that. And um, and I, and it's so fucking weird. But it's like, ah, uh, it's it's like ten pages. But I really like this part, and it's gonna be one of the things where I'm like, oh, okay, it's not due until like five days from now, so I'm actually gonna like. Oh, study and be prepared for it. But it's just so annoying to think that I'm going to put all this time and effort into it and it could just be nothing. But then also it could be something. And that's what you kind of have to remind yourself. Let me ask you this. Have you ever thought about this? Could you do a gay scene? (sighs) It depends on the part. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't just do it for like, yo, I'm pizza boy number three. And then you kiss a boy. I'm not, yeah, I'm kissing a boy, but I'm like, yo, if, if it's like really um a, like a big part of the character and I love the role, yeah, why not? What about something like um, Brokeback Mountain style? Man. That's hard. And this is, this is why I say it's hard, right? It's number one, obviously, as an actor, you're going to play roles that you've never... You're acting, right? Yeah. You're going to have to do like a deep dive on like what it is to be that. It's hard for me as a heterosexual male to picture myself as being homosexual. Yeah. You know, because I've never had any homosexual experiences. Yeah. So that's where I like it's, it's going to be a little difficult for me. Also, too, I might giggle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm going to be giggling. Like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm about to rock your fucking world. Dude. <laughs> I'm about to get that dick hard. Or they're going to be like, David, we need you to not be so into it. It's your first scene. <laughs> now, hold on a second. Yo, we about to fuck, bro. You about, I'm going to let you know. I did some crazy shit with my tongue. <laughs> well, hey, guys, picture me and David making out, and we're going to take a break. <laughs> Yo, today's podcast is brought to you by Good Chop. Hey, hey, David, Mm -hmm. do you like meat? I love meat. I love delicious meat as well. And let me tell you something, Good Chop is America's online butcher, okay? With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for high quality American meat and seafood, okay? Let me tell you guys, let me tell y'all, all right? Number one, you get easy access to high-quality products. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they offer convenient, contact-free delivery right to your doorstop. And you get fully customizable boxes. Choose beef, chicken, seafood. Oh, my goodness. They hooked me up with some ribeye and some scallops. That's my shit, son. And also, all products are sourced right here from the good old U.S. of A., okay? Unlike many other companies, Good Chop sources its meat and seafood exclusively from American farms and fisheries that set the bar high for animals animal welfare, and sustainable practices. Cattle are born, raised, and harvested in the good old U.S. of A. Mm. And by choosing Good Chop, you support local family farms and independent ranchers right here in the U.S., okay? Like I said, they gave me a firebox. I can't wait to get home tonight, make a good old medium rare ribeye steak with a side of scallops. Oh, my God. Okay, and just for y'all, we got a special treat. Go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use codes DUDE100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. One more time. Go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. And let me tell you, Good Shop, America's online butcher. Uh, So I actually had an audition um, where... 
I had a, I was an Asian dude with a Southern accent, and that is fucking hard. Yeah. So the part, <laughs> so it was hard. It was based in Thailand, right? And um, I wonder if I can talk about it. Fuck it, I could probably talk about. it. I didn't get the part, so fuck it, I'll talk about it. If, if they're already going, you could. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> do you remember when? Though that's that Thai soccer team got trapped in the caves in Thailand. Oh, and they were doing like a whole scuba excavation to get them yes, out. Yes, yes, because it was like the water was rising or some shit, and if they didn't get them out in time, like this whole soccer team just would have died. Okay, and they've done. I think there's already there's two different projects coming out about it. There's a Netflix project um, that is like a more you know. Um, like a scripted, stylized, like, you know, a movie about it, right? And I got hit up to audition. And I was already kind of like, oh, shit, my Thai isn't great. I wonder how much Thai they want me to speak for this part. But my part was a dude that was born in Thailand but moved to America, and he has a southern accent, but he's, like, this, like, water expert. So I'm like, oh, shit. That's so he- really very specific yeah so i but it's based on a real guy <laughs> oh for real it's based on one of the real players in this like story a dude that was like an expert in rocks or water or sedimentary shit or whatever this the fuck. sounds like a virgin if i've ever <laughs> 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 what do you do i do rocks <laughs> Well, I, I don't get out much, but I, I play with rocks and, and water. I see like, how wet the rocks get and what happens to them. But so I'm like, so, but you know, the, so I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to do this Southern accent. But of course, you know, I can do it when we're fucking around like just now. We're being funny, right? Like, you know, I'm going to ride that tractor into the sunset. <laughs> I'm going to fuck my cousin. I'm going to fuck my brother and my sister. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me just do that, but try to tone it down, you know? But I remember like I was giggling at myself because I'm like, shit, I got to play this country dude. <laughs> so I took one of my flannel shirts I cut the sleeves off <laughs> so I'm like to get into character <laughs> I have a fucking flannel shirt and a, a sleeveless flannel <laughs> you know what cracks me up about this this was doing this at home and he's just like this is gonna get me the part <laughs> this is it right here <laughs> I like a white DJ, sleeveless flannel. You put a piece of wheat in your mouth. <laughs> and I'm just chewing on some fucking barley. And but but the line is literally like, it's like something like, Colonel, Colonel, you you can't drill here. You can't drill here. This is sedimentary something. This is sediment this is what was it? Sedimentary water? No, it was like this is this is something something uh sandstone. Yeah. If the water rises to a something level, it'll flood the whole something, something, right? And I'm like, there's no way I got this shit, right? <laughs> but a week later, my agent's asking me for my availability because I'm on the list. Oh. I'm like, of like three to five, like they're narrowing it down. That's dope. And I was one of the people they were like thinking about, but I didn't get it. I wonder who got it because there's not many Thai actors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Especially American Thai actors. That can pull off a southern accent like me. Who the fuck took that role? Who knows? I guess we'll see when the movie comes out. If it hasn't come out yet, I don't know. Sweet John Cho. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fucking, uh, it's fucking uh, Ong Bak. Ong Bak? <laughs> Tony Ja? <laughs> Tony Ja. Sawadika. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I didn't get it. Um, But, but it actually worked out uh, scheduling-wise for me because... If I had gotten that part, I would have had to have gone to Thailand for like four months. And Vader was still a baby, baby. Mm, so, she wouldn't even know who the fuck you are. Yeah, man. And like, it would have been a struggle. Like, it's either like leave the baby for four months or bring the baby and Chia to Thailand for four months. And it's already like, you know. That Chia- would have been really fucking cool, though, for, for Veda. It would have been cool. But, you know, Chia likes to be comfortable when she's uncomfortable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. She would have liked to have been close to her OBGYN and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. be in her house and have her baby shit. I mean, it would have worked because I got family in Thailand. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like she, helped. he would have. Yeah. yeah, she would have had help from my aunties and shit. And one of my aunties like is really um uh, a high up in this hospital in Thailand too. So it's oh, like oh, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, so it it would have worked, but um, it just you know I didn't get the part. It's, I've never <laughs> ever been to Thailand. No, and I want to go so fucking <sighs> bad. He, oh man, okay. Yeah, I was watching uh, Anthony Bourdain uh, when he was traveling to Thailand. And he was eating some crazy shit. He was eating, like, eating some raw blood shit. 
mixed with like all these herbs and stuff. I'm I don't that's like probably rural Thailand area. Yeah. Because I've never seen these dishes before. But <laughs> Me neither. Because I don't know if I could do that. They like coagulated the the like cow blood or some shit. Oh yeah, yeah, just all the like the the, the blood cubes. Yeah, they, but they put a bunch of spices like fish sauce and stuff in it too. Interesting. I, I actually was down to eat it, but I'm kind of I'm always surprised when I see non Asian people eat food like that. Right, right, right. Because that's even for. Asian Americans, that's pretty fucking intense. Yeah, I mean, um, I kind of grew up with with soup with the the blood cubes in them. Uh, there's like a soup that my mom used to make. I, I I didn't fuck with the blood cubes as a youngin, but I feel like I you know I would be down to try now. I as kinda, an adult, I don't mind them. Yeah, yeah, um, I don't crave them. Thailand, but. man, the food in Thailand because Thai food is already fire, right? The food in Thailand. Man, it's like it's like when you have Mexican food in Mexico. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's just like it's something about it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the ingredients are just fresher out there or what. But like Thai food in Thailand is like, oh man, next level shit. Really? Dog. Yes, bro. Like even the even the commercialized like shit for the tourists. Man, the food is still like, oh, mwah. Isn't that crazy? Because that's how it is in Japan too. Mm-hmm. So there's spots that you will go to and. And if you know about like Japanese culture specifically, I mean, there's a lot of places you can go to Japan, but mm. they're just like craftsmen at what they do. But I feel like even in like Thailand, you know, these family businesses, they're just doing it. Like the, the kid will do it mm. after the parents, you know, pass away and their kids will do it. Their kids will do it. It's like the same recipe over and over. And so it's going to get good because they're only serving the same things all the time. Facts. Like Asian people don't do seasonal menus. <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> oh, you know, freaking uh, what's it called? Fiddly figs <laughs> are, are on the menu this Fiddly year. Fiddly figs that only grow on one tree. <laughs> Two times a week out of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Asian people don't have seasonal vegetables. They go, this is what we serve, and yeah. this is how the dish is every time. So, like, when you go to, like, places in Asia, you're tasting something that they've made a million times over. Every time. I remember being in Thailand, like, eight years old by my dad's house, and my dad would be like, uh, you want to go for a walk, get some noodles? I'm like, yeah, sure. And we'd go, like, a block or two fucking tiny little not even a restaurant just like a little like cart you know what I'm saying and there's these noodles called uh, bami noodles it's like uh, they're egg noodles I think and um and uh, we just order, and like it was like small portions, but you order, you know, as many as you want. And um, fuck, man, it's so bomb. I just don't even remember like ever having them like that ever again. It's interesting because I was watching certain videos, uh, travel videos to Vietnam, and um, there's a a soup that I really, really like, right? And it's uh, it's like a crab tomato soup, mm. right? I don't know why he's blanking out of head right now. My fucking Vietnamese is going out of my head. <laughs> but <clears throat> the way that we have it here is very different from how they have it in Vietnam if they're making it from scratch. Mm. And I didn't fucking know, right? Because mm. a lot of the flavoring in the soups, we have like pre-made paste that okay. we don't have to create. But when they make it from scratch, it's ridiculous. Like they're, the specific crab that they were using for this soup and the person speaking in Vietnamese, she's from Vietnam, and then she's also explaining it in subtitles in English, so I could read what's going on. Mm. But that specific dish was made with a very specific crab. It's like this tiny little crab, like the size of a quarter, and they crush all that shit, shell and all, just to make that dish. Really? So even like the quote unquote, I guess like the authentic way to make it, we don't really know, because we could have a good version here, but we make it to adjust to what we have, right? Right. It's like the evolution of Chinese food. Mm-hmm. Like the Chinese American food here is substantially different from probably what they have in China. Yeah. But it's still fire. It's like we'll never have those tiny crabs here, like yeah, they fresh just, at yeah. least. Yeah. I don't think they even import export. I think it's just in that area it's specifically like who the fuck is gonna, you know, export these tiny little lake crabs. Right. Have you ever had um blood clams? No. So blood clams, um, I mean, I've seen it out here, but I would only ever really eat it in Thailand because I don't really see it anywhere out here. And there are these little clams. And for some reason, when you open it up, it's just it's red and like the juice is red and they're so good. (laughs) It's like my family would just cook up a whole like fucking bowl of these blood clams bust it open put a little bit of you know my mom's seafood sauce a little bit of lemon and it's like mm, bomb does your mom ever make you too much fucking food uh my mom makes me food and i eat it for the rest of the week <laughs> <laughs> my mom will send me food from sacramento right she'll she'll freeze it and send it over and i just talked to her in the car today and she goes okay i made a bunch of mandu like korean dumplings mm. and i cured all this fish so you go f- i was like okay do not send me <laughs> 250 dumplings. <laughs> yes. I was like, 
she goes, you can freeze it and save it for later. And I literally told her, I was like, mom, you can't even eat the same dish two days in a row. How the fuck am I going to eat 250 fucking dumplings? Right. And she goes, you save it for later. It doesn't matter. I don't want to eat dumplings every day for six months. That's the thing, right? It's like, it's delicious. Yes. My mom's food is next level. But what? But when we like go to her house for dinner, and she might make some little like noodles with some some like garlic noodle situation with some shit, and it's bomb. And but she gives me like a whole giant thing of it. I'm like, I feel bad getting rid of it. But I'm like, bro, mom, I'm trying to be cute. I can't <laughs> eat noodles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week. It's too much. <laughs> she sent me an ice chest. She sent me this uh, container half the size of this table of kimchi. <laughs> And she goes, you could just make soups with... I was like, I understand. I am one person. And then Mario's half a person. Yeah. There's no, there's no way we can finish this in time. You know, and that's why I've called you or I've texted you plenty of times. I'm like, yo, I have like mad stew <laughs> if you want to come and get some. Because <laughs> I just don't want chicken, it to go right? to waste. Or like the fried chicken. Uh-huh. My mom made so much fried chicken. And I try to like finesse it, right? Like if she makes me a shitload of noodles, I'll be like, all right. So here's what I do sometimes with leftover noodles or like even leftover spaghetti. <laughs> I'll put the spaghetti in a um like a little frying pan, a little bit of oil, and I just crack an egg into it and I make breakfast spaghetti. And it's like a scrambled egg spaghetti and it's actually bomb. And so I try to find ways to finesse these noodles. Um, or if my mom like makes like a giant pot of soup and I'm sick of the soup, you know, one day um, I'll have soup. Maybe another day I'll throw some mama noodles in there. Or another day, I just try to repurpose the shit so I can eat it for as long as possible. But it gets to a point where it's like, I can't. Mama noodles are interesting because the noodles are actually kind of flavored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're flavored in and of itself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to add the little, the shit in the. I'm kind of surprised. I didn't know that shit. Mm -hmm. So when I was, uh, I just kind of. Uh, chewed on one just to see uh, how done it was. I'm yeah. like, oh shit, this actually tastes pretty good without anything. Bro, j- you can just boil some mama noodles with some broth, and it's uh, with it, the, the broth that you that comes with the noodles. Hella good, fucking bomb. Too bad it's like the size of a fucking quarter. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could eat like six of those, dude. Those things are hella small, dude. Man, and you know what I started doing? Chia started doing this before me because I didn't realize. Because whenever we would even buy like um, I don't know, name another pack of ramen that people buy. Um, like Maruchan? Sure, Maruchan. She would cut them in half. And I'd be like, oh, we, why are you cutting these in half for? But then I realized, like, if you read the package, it's it's two servings in one thing. I was like, what? It's like 500-something calories on on average. That's crazy, man. Yeah, the Korean ones are hefty, man. But I could eat two of those in one sitting. Because you're a hefty boy. I'm a, I'm a big boy, dude. And it's so <laughs> fuck. So here's the thing. Yeah. I actually prefer Korean ramyun versus... Craft Japanese ramen. I've heard you say that. Yeah, I prefer the packaged ramen. It's my shit. Korean people have this weird affinity towards packaged Korean ramen. It's mm. our shit. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, it doesn't fucking matter. Really? You can do so many different shit with it. It is, if I was on my deathbed, <laughs> that's one of the things I have to eat. Really? So if you guys don't know, uh, if you're a Korean and you love like ramen, you probably should have this pot. It's this brass gold pot. I'm not sure if you you've seen that Korean barbecues. Yeah, the the kind you make like a Moscow mule in. <laughs> kind of, yeah. No, 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 I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> it's this really thin aluminum or brass pot that you'll see. You can get it at a Korean market for seven dollars. Okay. Super fucking thin, and the reason why it's super thin is because it boils water super fast. Hmm. There's not much to it. If you if I bang it on the floor, it'll be bent up. That's how thin it is. Okay. Cool thing about it too, and the reason why people like it, is that not only that is that after your noodles are done cooking, the vessel, because it's so thin, it doesn't stay hot. So it doesn't cook the noodles any further. Mm. Right? So when you if so you could eat it straight out of the pot. Mm-hmm. So back in the day in, in Korea, and I heard this from uh, Mariel's aunt, is that they used to have these little stands or carts where they would just on have fire out and they will boil all this water so people would just come and eat this ramen. Oh. And they would serve it in these pots. And then you take the lid off and then you could eat the ramen with the lid. Interesting. Right? So if you get this ramen called Samyang ramen, okay. it's actually the first ramen uh, company, like instant ramen company ever made in Korea. Really? And it's still one of the best ones out there. Still fucking good. Man, come through and make us some Korean ramen one day. <laughs> Dog, I could do it however the way, how I like to do it is shit ton of green onions and mm-hmm. I'll slice it to where it curls up Mm-mm-mm-mm. and then I'll put two poached eggs and then the green onions and you mix it up and you eat that shit. Mm, sounds delicious. Fucking fire. You know what I really wanted to try? 
after watching Parasite, the shit that she made. Oh, with, I can make that for like you. Like the little steak cut up into the whatever the fuck yeah. it was. I don't know why it's called lamdon. I guess I, I'm not sure if that's like an invention of the show because I've never heard of it. Mm. Because it's, essentially, it's chapaguri and noguri, so they call it chapaguri. Okay. Right, and so you mix those two packets together, and it's it's like. It's like a 1,200 or 1,500 calories to oh. eat the whole thing. You know what Chia used to do, which is kind of funny? Because um, she looks at me crazy sometimes when I'm making my concoctions. Um, but they're always good. So She grew up, dog. And her sister would do this thing for her. And she used to, she loved it so much where she would take uh, like the Ichiban ramen noodles, right? Super fire. Super fire. And she would get that, um, so- whatever sauce came with that, and mix it with fucking Kraft mac and cheese. And then they would mix that together and make like this that's like actually concoction. pretty fucking fire. And that's her shit, dog. She loves it. She doesn't eat it much nowadays, but that's like one of her like when she was pregnant, she was craving so many things that she kind of grew up on, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things she made when she was pregnant. She was like, "I'm craving this right now." The craft doodle with the Madachan Robin seasoning. Mm-hmm. That sounds like prison food. Well, and and that's so funny because, so I actually when I'm having homemade spaghetti, I prefer it with mama noodles. Because my dad, whenever he made spaghetti growing up, he would always, we wouldn't just have spaghetti noodles on deck, you know? So he would make it with the mama noodles, and I I just got used to it. So when I'm making my spaghetti, or if she is making spaghetti, I, she'll boil her spaghetti noodles, but I'm like, all right, I'm going to boil my mama noodles, and I put mm. the sauce over that. Because I just feel like, you know, the little curliness, curly texture of the noodles kind of like collects the sauce a little more, too. My mom used to, uh, I think the reason why I like Filipino uh, spaghetti is because my mom used to dump a shit ton of ketchup mm. in our spaghetti. Mm-hmm. I mean, Filipino spaghetti they use banana ketchup, but my mom used to always do that shit. And the weird thing is, is like all these like weird renditions of like your childhood foods is always the stuff that I always go back to. Mm-hmm. Like it does fa- favorite thing to eat when I'm super hungry is the easiest thing ever. If you guys want to make this at home, get a nice fresh hot bowl of steaming rice, mm-hmm. fry a couple of eggs, put it on top. Soy sauce, butter, sesame oil. Mm. Mix it up, get some seaweed, put it in and eat it. That sounds great. Have it with some kimchi. That's actually one of probably top 10 favorite meals ever. You can't go wrong with a fried egg, fried real good, some rice and, you know, like soy sauce or fish sauce. A mm, little fish sauce on there. Mm. I, uh, when I was a little kid, one of my favorite snacks, and my parents were excited about this because it was so easy, it was literally just soy sauce and rice, and I could eat that like all the time. For real? Yeah, yeah. I would just, I would just, I would be like, "Mom, I'm hungry," and she'd just make a little rice and drizzle a little soy sauce, and that was my shit. Yeah, we would do that, but with butter and sesame oil. Mm. Oh, you fancy? Yeah, it, you know, better taste. All right, well, guys, <laughs> picture me and David having sex, and we're gonna take a break. Hey guys, this episode of. Dudes Behind the Foods is brought to you by GoodyBrand.com. Tim here, just popping in to remind you that what's a better Christmas gift than some fly-ass clothes? I mean, GoodyBrand.com, we got new hats. Uh, Count your blessings. We got beanies. We got new flannels. We got all types of new gear. So go to GoodyBrand.com and check it out. Um, so I know normally we have, or not normally, but sometimes we have snacks and drinks on here. Uh, I stopped by a liquor store, and I'm not going to lie, as I was driving to the studio, I yawned. So I was like, let me pick up some little coffee, and this coffee has Kahlua in it. Let me read you the direct the uh, ingredients here. Um, coffee. Coffee liqueur. A dash of vodka. And uh, nitro foam. There you go. First of all, me love coffee, me love alcohol, and Kahlua is fire. You put Kahlua in, uh, I don't know, hot chocolate. Yeah, fire. I I I used to just have a bottle of Kahlua just when I was in the in the mood for some chocolate milk and Kahlua. Chocolate, hot chocolate and Kahlua. Boy, fire. yes. And let me tell you, you know, um, <clears throat> I was never. Uh... <laughs> I thought a demon was going to come out. <laughs> 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 Cheers. Oh, I haven't eaten anything today. The first thing Me I neither. Have. We're going to be wired, dude. Let's get it. Are you supposed to shake this first? I don't know. It's pretty good, though. Yeah, it is good. Hmm. Oh, this is good. This tastes like the Japanese coffee in the can. Mm-hmm. 
man, isn't it funny how I don't know if caffeine hits you the way it hits me, but I don't drink a lot of coffee. So as soon as I take a sip, I feel my eyes go. Mm, bing. I've been drinking a lot of coffee lately. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I need to get my teeth whitened. It's been fucking up my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I should be fucking hella yellow. I just I looked at it the other day. I'm like, oh wow, that's a shade more yellow than it normally is. <laughs> <laughs> fucking coffee. Um, there's some, probably someone will do it for you for free if you just shout them out on Instagram. I don't want to shout anybody <laughs> out. I refuse. <clears throat> so let me tell you, I've been um, you know, I like I said, I never drank coffee, but because of you know when we were trying to figure out parent life, I've been sleepy. You know what I'm saying? Adjusting to babies and schedules and and all that shit. So when we had shoots, I started, you know, drinking cold brew and stuff. But I really never, you know, it's like I I didn't it didn't feel too much of a boost, right? And then recently, you know, this like, um, before our Disneyland shoots and our when when Foodie Call shoots, I started getting this shit from Starbucks. It's it's oat milk and some type of like black sugar. And it's two shots of espresso in every single one. And, um, wired. And that shit gets me, oh, Bobby, I be like a Daffy Duck bouncing off the walls, <laughs> dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. Cause I'm like, I come into the shoot sometimes, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm tired. But then as soon as that espresso hits me, I'm like, oh, let's get it. Like literally the other day, I, I had one before, um, a Zoom podcast interview, and I didn't realize how much it was like, kind of like surging through my veins. And until... You were talking super fast. No, but uh, maybe I was. I don't know. But I um, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go pee real quick, and I did like a, a like a hand gesture, and in the camera, I saw my hand like shaking. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna pee. I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> but yeah, man. So I'm kind of a you know I'm an, I'm an espresso boy now. Who knew? Dude, people. People somehow always manage to take something that people enjoy and then fucking snootify it. <laughs> fucking snooty coffee drinkers, man. Because mm. I, I enjoy coffee, I, but my enjoyment of coffee is like how I enjoy wine. I don't know like these this shit. You know it's a fucking Brazilian roast yeah. from Brazil. <laughs> hey, so check it out. Mm. You know what an insult is in a coffee shop? What? So check this out. I had no fucking idea. So if you're... <laughs> <laughs> sad, dog. These are hazelnut wafers. All right, <laughs> to go with our coffee. So fucking, this is an insult. If you ask for a coffee, <laughs> yeah. If you get a coffee, uh huh, and then you, <laughs> uh-huh. all that dust came out your mouth. <laughs> the fucking dusty ass wafer. That shit was chalky as fuck. <laughs> Okay. So if you get a coffee, mm-hmm. and let's say you don't like it, right? And for example, I, I got a coffee that was, it was a little too fruity and acidic for my taste. Okay. And so they'll go, oh, so would you like something a little more cozy? Which basically they're saying that, oh, you don't know good coffee. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so which means like it's a darker roast. It's not as, I don't know, as nuanced. And they're like, oh, can we get you something cozy? That means he's basically saying that you're a piece of shit and you don't know what the fuck you're drinking. Like, oh, would you like a cozy frappuccino with yeah. a bunch of sugar in yeah, it? Yeah, you, uh, you're like, you're going to Starbucks, you fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> my, my boy Eric, Super Ego, one time he was like, yeah, you know, I really started getting into drinking coffee lately, you know? And I'm like, oh, what do you order? He's like, a uh, frappuccino with extra caramel drizzles on top. <laughs> And he was not joking. Oh my god! Did I get a blah 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 frappuccino, a, a caramel whipped cream on top? Yeah, I would say to him, "Yeah, you like cozy stuff." I would say that to him, "You, yeah, Mister Cozy." But yeah, they they're very particular about this stuff. And Mariel, when she went to a coffee shop, she found that out because of her friend. Really? So her friend was like, "Can you fucking believe what he just said to you?" I was like, "What?" He, he said, "Would you like something cozy?" Oh. And she asked, "What does that mean?" She goes, "Well, he's basically saying you don't know shit about coffee." Wow. First of all, bitch, I don't like. Acidic coffee. Right. If it's too acidic, I think it's very unpleasant. It's not balanced. So I like it a little more toned down. And so what if that's a little cozy bitch? Yeah, bitch. Yeah, what's wrong with you, motherfucker? Yeah, motherfucker. There's a place out in Pasadena. Mm-hmm. It's uh they uh it's a pretty well known coffee shop, but I actually got into it with the barista because of how he was talking to me. Really? Yeah, and apparently that guy got fired because he he talks to customers that Just way. Just super a lot. condescending. And then I was the last straw. Really? I I was I came in and I was like, hey, I I never been here before. Like, what do you recommend? Like, he was like, how do I answer that? Like, what would you want? (laughs) 
And I looked at him. Are you serious? Yeah. He said, how do I answer that? I'm like, give me some fucking coffee. <laughs> so I got so mad. He's like, sir, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know anything about you. I don't know your likes and dislikes. I don't know where you're from. How am I supposed to tell you yeah. what kind of coffee to drink? What, what did the wrinkles in your butthole look like? Huh? <laughs> but I, I was so taken aback. And, the, you know, people behind me were shocked, too. They're just kind of like, yo, I was like, hey, do I know you? Right. And he was like, it's like, no, I just don't know what your preference. I was like, I understand. Don't fucking talk to me like that. Yeah. I just asked you what you think is good. I'm not a fucking coffee drinker. Right. Right. I'm just here to get me a cup of coffee and my friend a cup of coffee. So just fucking recommend me something. And then the manager came out and was like, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Took him in the back and he was fired. Wow. Because I guess because if you look at those Yelp reviews, he it was the consistent thing was about how this guy would talk to people. Really. So people who were coffee drinkers, he would you know treat them special and they would like. Just talk it up. So the good reviews were about him. Like, oh, we could talk for coffee about hours, mm. but it, for four hours. But if you didn't know about coffee, he would treat you like a piece of shit. It's like it's coffee, dude. Dude, you should have roasted him. <laughs> <laughs> that joke was very cozy. <laughs> <laughs> would you like a uh, hazelnut wafer? Please, this dusty ass cookie <laughs> that you probably got from a gas station. I got it at this whatever liquor store I got this shit from. Wafers are already just kind of dusty though. Yo, but this is ashy as fuck. <laughs> this is like Kevin Durant shin dust. <laughs> Look, as someone who is ashy every day, well, you gotta stop shaming Kevin Durant, all right? Your boy is ashy. No, no, no. That was not ashy. That motherfucker died. Let me show you my leg. Because I am an extremely ashy person. <laughs> okay, check this out. Bro, you look like a lizard. <laughs> Why don't... Just use some fucking lotion, dude. When he moves his skin, you could actually see the layer of... <laughs> Crack the stones in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> His skin is so dry right now. You have you seen ever uh, the pudding skin? <laughs> have you seen pudding skin on top of that you peel off? Yeah. Oh my god. That's what that shit fucking looks let me, like. Let me tell you, Chia. Chia is disgusted by how ashy I am. And um, because she is a very like lotion up after everything type girl. She, the girl is moist. She is. Moisturized. <laughs> Moist as fuck, all right? I am... I just got to a point... There was a point in my life where I would lotion up every day. Um, Now, I'm married. It's like, what I gotta look moisturized for? But she is so grossed out. Hey, let me tell you this. You need to put a little effort in. Because <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. I actually had a conversation with, with my lady... <laughs> So my lady grew up with her grandma, mm -hmm. right? And her mom was busy working. She was busy, you know, going to school. She's an acupuncturist, you know, in the medical field, whatever, whatnot. And she was doing this in her, later on in her life as a career change. So the person that raised um, Mariel was her grandmother. Okay. But because of that, she picked up old grandma shit okay. as her behavior. So when she gets up or sits down, ah, I go, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what she does. I'm not even fucking exaggerating. So one day I just looked at her. I was like, enough. <laughs> she's like, she looks at me and she says, what? I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. No more. Don't, don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. And she looks at me and says, I've been doing this since the beginning. What's the problem? I'm like, yeah, it was funny at first, but we have to fuck eventually. <laughs> I just, you make noises like old people. I can't, when you sit down, you don't have to go, Ah, you don't have to. Your knees are fine. You're in your low 30s. You're good. Every time she does something, it's it's reminiscent of her grandma because how her grandma raised her, she mm. just picked up all the stuff. So whenever she picks up something or she drinks something, ah. Dude, you just got to mirror her energy, man. You got to give her the same shit. Just like, just come in the house. Just when, when next time you guys are about to bone, just like be smelling like Ben Gay. <laughs> I'm gonna put it on my penis. You used to put it on your penis. <laughs> I thought yeah. you said you're gonna put on your penis. I was like, damn, <laughs> what's going yeah. on? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, God, 
This is actually addictive. <laughs> you, you like that? <laughs> I just cracked my toe knuckles again. <laughs> oh, shit. David almost died. Yes. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second, guys. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. <laughs> Weak, bro. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah bitch. I love it. <laughs> oh, you like that? Hand farts, baby. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> that wraps up this episode. This episode of uh, Toots Behind the Boots. This is the best footage ever. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me try something. I have to take my pants off. My fucking face hurts. <laughs> this is going to be lit. I got to take my pants off for this, but it's lit. What the fuck? I got to oh, get chill, down. Chill, chill, chill. Yeah. Chill, chill. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. Hold on a second. Hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, okay, hold on. Let me get the mic over here. Okay, okay, okay. What's going on? Thank you guys for listening and watching Dudes Behind the Foods. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, rate us five stars. I'm Tushan Dragsu. I'm David So. Bye. Bye. <laughs>